वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू माई सेल्फ प्रोफेसर नागरी एस एस फ्रॉम के जी सोमय कॉलेज कोपरगाव इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट द न्यू चैप्टर फ्रॉम दिस सिलेबस दैट इज चैप्टर नंबर फोर क्रोमोटोग्राफिक टेक्निक्स पेपर एंड थिन लेयर क्रोमोटोग्राफी इन दिस लेक्चर नंबर फर्स्ट वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी सम इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स फ्रॉम दिस चैप्टर द फर्स्ट वन इज द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ दिस चैप्टर second one is iupsc definition of chromatography and third one is the types of chromatography before starting this lecture those who are not yet subscribe my youtube channel so please subscribe my youtube channel and press the bell icon in order to get the notification for the upcoming video lectures on the important topics so let us start this today's lecture as far as the introduction of this chapter is to be considered we have to see here what is mean by actually this chromatography chromatography literally means color writing so the literally meaning of this chromatography is a color writing it is a new physical technique of separation identification and purification of a mixture in this chromatography we concern about the separation identification and purification of a mixture it consists of a group of techniques that are used to separate the components of a mixture which are closely related to each other so if we want to separate the components of a mixture so we can take the help of this chromatographic technique it is used in many areas of study like chemistry biology medicine pigments dyes etc so this chromatography has the vast applications in different fields it is used for purification and separation of organic and inorganic substances now next important point is iupsc definition of chromatography the iupsc in 1993 define the technique chromatography according to iupsc chromatography is defined as a physical method of separation in which the components to be separated are distributed between two phases one of which is stationary phase and the other is a mobile phase moves in a definite direction so according to this iupsc this is one physical method so this physical method is commonly used for the separation of a mixture into its constituents components these components are to be separated or these are distributed between the two phases one is a stationary phase and second one is the mobile phase so this is the definition of this chromatography according to iupsc the next important point is what are the types of the chromatography so this chromatography has the different types depending upon its principle as well as the different types of the applications so in this lecture we have to look towards some important types of the chromatography the first important type is paper chromatography this is a liquid liquid partition type of chromatography this is a old technique to analyze the complex mixtures so this is a liquid liquid partition type of chromatography and this is useful for the anal analysis of the complex mixtures the second one is thin layer chromatography it may called as the tlc technique it is widely used laboratory technique in laboratory we can commonly use this type of chromatography that is a thin layer chromatography it is similar to paper chromatography except that it involves a stationary phase of a thin layer of adsorbent like silica gel alumina or cellulose on a flat inert substrate so this paper chromatography and thin layer chromatography are near about similar but one important difference is there in this thin layer chromatography we have to use a stationary phase of thin layer of adsorbent for this purpose we may take here the help of silica gel alumina or cellulose while in case of paper chromatography we can use the paper the third important type of this chromatography is ion exchange chromatography it is a column chromatography based on charge so this chromatography is based on a charge the stationary phase is usually an ion exchange resin that carries charge functional groups so in this case the stationary phase which is used is ion exchange resin 
and it carries the charge functional groups. Now, what are the applications of this ion exchange chromatography? The first important application is it is used to purify any kind of charge molecule such as large proteins, small nucleotides and amino acids. So this is the first important application of this ion exchange chromatography. The second application is nowadays it is important for investigating aqueous systems such as drinking water. It is also used for analyzing anionic elements or complexes that helps to solve environmentally relevant problems. So this is the third important type of chromatography, ion exchange chromatography. The fourth important type is gel permeation chromatography. It is a type of size exclusion chromatography that is SEC separates analytes on the basis of size. So in this chromatography, we have to separate the mixture on the basis of the size of the analytes. It separates analytes on the basis of size or hydrodynamic volume, that is the radius of gyration. So in this chromatography, the basis of analysis or the separation is based upon the size of hydro, hydronomic volume or it is called as the radius of gyration. So these two points are taken into consideration for separation purpose. One is the size and second one is called as the hydrodynamic volume. Now what are the applications? So first one is it is used to purify any kind of charge molecule such as large proteins, small nucleotides and amino acids. So for the purification purpose, this gel permission chromatography is commonly used for the large biomolecules. It may be the proteins or some nucleotides and amino acids. Nowadays, it is important for investigating aqueous systems such as drinking water. It is used for analyzing anionic elements or complexes that helps to solve environmentally relevant problems. So in this case, we may investigate the aqueous systems as such as the drinking water or it may be useful for solve the environmentally relevant problems. So this is one important type of the chromatography, gel permeation chromatography. The next important type of chromatography is the affinity chromatography. It is a type of chromatographic laboratory technique used for purifying biological molecules within a mixture. So if we want to purify the biological molecules in a particular mixture. So at that time, this affinity chromatography is commonly used. It is used for separating biochemical mixtures based on highly specific interaction between antigen and antibody, enzyme and substrate, receptor and ligand, or protein and nucleic acids. So in a short, we can say that if we want to separate a biochemical mixture on the basis of the specific interaction, between these two moieties, it may be antigen and antibody, it may be enzyme and substrate. So, at that situation, we can use the affinity used to purify and concentrate a substance from a mixture into buffering solution by reducing the amount of unwanted substances in a mixture. So this is the first important application means it is useful for purification and concentrate concentration purpose for a given substance in a mixture. The second important application is it is used for the determination of inhibition constants of enzymes. So if we want to calculate the inhibition constant of an enzyme. So at that time, this chromatography is commonly used. The next important application is, it is ideal for the study of interactions in biochemical process. So if you want to study the interactions in the biochemical processes, so at that time also, this affinity chromatography is commonly used. So in this lecture, we discuss about the next chapter from the syllabus in which we studied, the first one is the introduction of this chapter, in the next part we studied here the IPC definition of a chromatography and in the last part we can study here the classification of the chromatography in which we studied here in a short five different types of the chromatography. The remaining type of the chromatographic techniques we will study in a 
next video lecture i hope you understand this lecture very well the remaining points from this syllabus we will study in our next lecture so with this i stop here thank you thank you so much